So let's begin by noting that socialism is indeed still the goal. And this will surprise very many people because of the disbandment of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics in 1991 and the disbandment of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Many people thought then that communism, socialism rather, had been so discredited that it could never rise again. But there were many left-leaning analysts, there were many socialist parties still in the other countries in the world who saw it quite differently, who looked at what had happened in the Soviet Union and said, well, it doesn't really matter. Because in the words of Joe Slovo, what Moscow had done was too commandist and bureaucratic and that isn't what socialism was supposed to be. In the future, socialism would be what it's supposed to be. It would be democratic, it would be participatory. And so everything that had gone wrong in the Soviet Union and other countries was irrelevant. We would have real socialism in the future. And real socialism is supposedly all about human rights. And so we had here in South Africa, Chris Harney, who was then the General Secretary of the SACP, saying that socialism is all about decent shelter for the homeless, and it's about water for those who don't have safe water to drink, and health care, and a life of dignity for the aged, and decent schooling for all our people. And socialists make it seem that the only way to achieve these benefits is via socialism, which of course is also not true, but fundamentally this is not an accurate description of socialism because ultimately the reality is pervasive repression, unprecedented state power at a level which I think is difficult to imagine when you're in a still mainly capitalist country. And almost 100 million deaths that were chalked up in the Soviet Union, Mao's China, Cambodia, Vietnam, Cuba, and so on, and which were recorded in the Black Book of Communism in 1999. And all of this can't simply be waved away. In addition, democratic socialism has not worked in the 21st century, whether in Zimbabwe or in Venezuela. So socialism is to be achieved by means of the democratic, the National Democratic Revolution. And what is it? The NDR concept was developed in the 1950s by the Soviet Union. And the aim was very much to take a whole number of newly independent colonies in Africa and Asia from capitalism to socialism by incremental steps. In some instances, it could be done quite quickly. At other times, it would require quite a prolonged process. The ANC and the SACP, which is the dominant partner of the ANC, have been committed to the NDR since the 1960s. I think at that point, they often hoped that after liberation of, in South Africa, there would be a quick transition to socialism. But by the time the People's War ended in 1994 and the ANC took power, well, the Soviet Union had been disbanded and we were in what seemed to be a different global order, which meant that it was actually going to take a long time. Nevertheless, the SACP and the ANC still see the NDR as providing the most direct route to socialism, even though it may take 30 or 40 years to achieve that goal. And of course, they have already been implementing it since 1994, so progress has been made. And we'll start with NDR achievements in the political arena, which was where the focus was first placed. And among other things, Parliament has been greatly weakened because ANC MPs are deployed cadres, who therefore report to the deployment committees that put them in their positions rather than to voters. They don't hold the executive to account. They failed to do so with Zuma over in Kanda and over state capture. They've more recently failed to do so with Ramaphosa and the Pala Pala saga. And overall, they are probably still too sleepest to act. This is a word that was coined by the, by the, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Tandi Medisa, who rather apologized to the Zondo Commission and said, sorry, I guess we were too sleepest. We could have stopped state capture, but we somehow didn't. And he was very skeptical about whether there would be any less sleepest in the future, as we heard when he addressed Parliament recently. The judiciary has been weakened 
Not in all instances, there's some good judgments which come out of the Constitutional Court, but in very many cases, when it's important to the NDR, the judges are more committed to transformation, which is not a term that appears anywhere in the Constitution, than they are to upholding the actual wording in the Constitution. <coughs> and other independent institutions have been greatly weakened by CADA deployment, which is a particularly important tool of the NDR. And James Myberg was perceptive enough to say a number of years ago that CADA deployment creates two lines of accountability which conflict. The one line is ostensibly to the Constitution and the law, and, and so people are, who have been appointed to important institutions are supposed to be loyal to the Constitution. But actually they are CADAs, so their first loyalty is really to the SACP, ANC deployment committees that have put them in their positions and which they need to keep pleasing in order to stay there. The media, the universities, civil society, business have all been infiltrated too. As the ANC wrote in its 1998 document on the strategy of CADA deployment, the aim was very much to use it in relation to civil society as well. And nothing seemed to be off limits to the ANC, which was what Bill Johnson wrote at the time. So they planned to deploy CADAs to business and the economy, They'd have planned also to deploy them to education, to sports bodies, to science and technology institutions, to NGOs, perhaps to the churches. There really didn't seem to be any limit to how far CADA deployment could go. And in all instances, CADAs would have be expected to keep pushing for NDR implementation, whatever institutions they were in, to keep um, engaging in a battle of ideas that would make NDR <coughs> concepts the right ones and to report back onto the, to the ANC on what they observed in the institutions to which they had been deployed. 